with virtual simulation today, um, that's you know different than our normal situ simulation and for high fidelity, mid fidelity, et cetera, but allows nursing schools to offer students an additional opportunity to practice clinical judgment skills. As we are thinking and developing, and really at the end of the day, it's getting our undergrad nurses prepared for the NCLEX. And we all know that the NCLEX, the, they have to make a safe and effective clinical judgment every time. That's what it's evaluating them. And so with our program, we have come up with, there's four C's that our students uh, find for success. And we are helping with that clinical judgment. How do they make that clinical judgment? Gaining additional clinical experience via, you know, virtually online. It's going to help and develop their competency and also create a confidence within themselves. So they, when they are actually interacting with live patients in clinicals, they will have the wherewithal and knowledge and comp not only competency, but the confidence to, to, to work with them and to deal with them. In addition to the flip side of how this also helps faculty and you all that are joining today, it's we have four R's that we've identified. And it's the remediation. You know, we we know that the students expect you all to teach them everything. And we, we know today that's near impossible. So it allows an additional step for them to remediate uh, on hand without you being around. It provides exceptional reporting that will track more than 40 multiple pieces within their thought process of, you know, basic assessment skills to what are they thinking along the lines of why did they move from this question to that question after this answer from a patient, et cetera. We have a full range of cases and specialties that we are offering. And then also it's to reclaim time back. Um, again, time of the essence and it is one of those things that evaporates that we can never get back. And how do we get that included with this? Well, signed, uh, um, you can assign these outside the classroom. So what we're gonna kind of walk through is, you know, bring in the case-based approach, kind of feeling at the bedside mindset into a classroom with iHuman patients for virtual simulation. So the students can develop those clinical judgment skills and also the clinical experience that they need to follow the clinical tasks that patients uh, deserve and help you make help them make better decisions. So clinical judgment. I'm sure you've asked. You know how do how do you teach and measure clinical judgment? You know how do you think of you know bringing in clinical experience into your classroom right now? So most people think of of clinical as it's clinical time, not didactic time. Well, this is what merges the two together. How do you bring the classroom into the clinical experience? Well, with iHuman, the assessment of nursing students' preparedness into the field is moving from a recall recognition to a case-based analysis. Um, again, this is what the next generation NCLEX is moving towards. You may also have asked, you know, are, are your students getting the clinical experience they need to succeed? Time and space, again, time is, is of the essence. Space is becoming more limited, more challenged. Um, specialties, varieties of experiences. Those are, again, such a hit and miss these days when they are out there and what iHuman can offer is a 24-7 access to a wide range of cases developed for their clinical judgment skills. So I'm going to walk you through one today uh, later on, but I just want to kind of jump through how these four C's are being met. Again, developing confidence and competency. How do your students prepare for their clinical experience? Like think about what you're doing before they go to their first clinical. Do your students feel confident going into those? Um, do they feel confident Sending, do you as faculty feel confident sending your students out the clinical? And wouldn't it be great to have a tool to kind of help track and measure? Yep, they're ready. No, they're not. Um, so again, preparing to gain confidence, ability to succeed as the clinical judgment. That's the end goal. And as we look through next gen, what they're looking at and placing the focus on their clinical judgment task model are the six out or six separate areas: recognizing cues and analyzing those cues prioritizing what they're finding and hypothesizing what they should be doing, generating a solution, game plan, creating that care plan, taking action, and then prioritizing and also then evaluating their outcomes. So again, fewer mistakes by novice nurses for improved patient outcomes. I know NCLEX is measuring minimum competency, but we're all trying to get that maximum competency out there. Um, so, what I just want to talk today about the left side on the right side of the screen, you'll see this decision Kaplan tree. We have another seminar like this coming down the road uh, that you will hopefully all like to join that will really dissect how Kaplan's decision tree matches up to the new clinical task model. 
But for today's purposes, since I'm actually the senior strategic sales executive for iHuman, I'm going to walk you through how each step of the process through iHuman's uh, platform will go through that and how it matches. So going through an electronic health record, prioritizing findings, et cetera. Um, how this will look, again, I'm going to just show you some screenshots, but I'm going to dive in live here momentarily. But think about how they go through an electronic health record. There are many different types of platforms out there, and yet how do they learn when there's so many different ones? Well, we've generically created a health record that's going to cover all the bases that they're going to see. They're going to go through and evaluate those and recognize, and again, analyze cues, something that stands out. Um, I'll show you this example uh, along the way. And as we all know, too, as students are learning, learning, again, our program is designed to be scaffolded throughout their full education. It's not just for assessment. It's not just for critical thinking. It's to map the two together and mold it so they understand the full process. As we know, students learn and that they're hopefully opening up that textbook and breaking that cellophane seal, and they don't know what they don't know, this is the program that's going to help track kind of their thought process. What are they identifying? What is it that's important? What's not important? Those highlighters, instead of it being in a book, what they're going to be able to do is actually follow this online and be able to track. We are also going to be providing history, and there's three different modes of, of way to ask questions to our patients. Um, they can be unfolded through a taxonomy of statements and questions that we can provide or not. Uh, as your students advance through the curriculum, maybe we just start with a clean slate, then they can type in their questions. And then what's nice is it's our program uses a natural language processor. Embedded in our program, there's roughly about 3,000 questions that we can ask our patient. Now, a majority of our patients don't require more than probably 30 to maybe 40 questions. So we're talking one one hundredth of the size of amount that we have to do um, and how we can do that. We can also do a voice to text, which is, again, uh, to help speed along their play. So what we do with this information, again, through assessment, not only are we going through electronic health record, we've gone now and maybe taken a good history with our questionings of our, of our patient. We can even do a physical exam to make sure what we're finding, all the cues to help us with our, our, our care plan. And again, this is in a safe environment. So our students feel safe. These are, you know, non-fictional people. Uh, they're, they're avatars. They can play with them, do a thing, uh, and ask them questions. And ultimately, at the end of the day, doing the physical, we have a full head to toe range. And I'll show you what that looks like here momentarily as well. Again, once we get the information, moving into the staging of that task model, uh, the prioritization and hypothesizing of what is the main focus? What do we do with this? What's, what's acute? And what do we do with what do we need to do uh, if it's worsening? How do we identify the problem needs of our, of our clients and our patients? So this is all, again, we have guide rails set up within the program, so they, they can have a lot more hand-holding along the way. Um, we can take those guide rails off as they develop, and again, allowing them to, to think more outside of the box, uh, so to say, and it truly track what their clinical reasoning skills are doing. So think of this, too, as when they're hypothesizing, prioritizing, what are they coming up with? And again, I'm, we're, I'm showing you an example for Evo. I, I, I'm actually going to walk through Evo as our patient today um, and, and go through what our, our main focuses are. After we have done that, we are going to start generating our solutions and then taking our action. So what is it that I'm going to do on my shift? Um, how does that look? How do I prioritize? What are, what are the things that I'm actually going to be doing and assigning those to myself and or rolling it off uh, to my next colleague? So. Ultimately, at the end of the day, what we are circling back to is coming out and can we evaluate all of this thought process and providing them expert feedback along the way. Our cases are played in two modes. You can do a test mode where they literally get no feedback until the end. But the majority of what our, our partner schools are doing now is actually allowing them to feel like a preceptors with them or having a faculty member along the side of them because as they complete each step, they get instantaneous feedback. As you will see, the remediation can be overwhelmingly important because it can help you understand if you missed certain pieces, how to gather that information still to, to make the next step along the process better. 
So again, remediation, the, the outcomes at the end of the day, I'll show you what this all looks at and providing a summary of cases at the end. Um, but just know we have instantaneous feedback for students so they can get instant help uh, along the way to help guide them to be successful. Um, again, detailed uh, and allowing students to work independently. So these can be assigned again independently if for homework, you can do for flipped classroom, you can do for clinical makeup, um, multiple ways. You can do even as a, a faculty lead um, in a classroom and just do a poll discussion within the case. So as we again provide all this data gathering, so every click, every note, everything I'm doing and tracking into the system as a user, all being tracked for you as faculty to use something with it. So that's the other piece too. You go out to clinicals, you're evaluating your students in sim labs. It's hard to get every student accounted for to the degree that you would like to get to. This allows that now to identify who is the more risk student that I need to pay attention to the most, who is it that seems to be getting it, and maybe use them as a model for your other students. But again, we are able to track all this information. They will see it. We can look at it individually. We can look at it aggregately along the way. Because again, that's ultimately what we're trying to do is make your life a little bit easier, get back some of the time, some of the teaching that you really want to do, and be able to identify strengths and weaknesses easier, faster, quicker, especially those that are going to clinical. You just don't have the time that you want to dedicate. And this, this program allows you to really track and, and do all that. So again, some of the, just the generic slides here of, of what we can see, we can view in. Um, but I'll, I'll kind of go into this here as well, about talking about how we even track not only what they are frequently missing, but what are they distracted by? What are the extraneous tasks or extraneous physical exams that we're doing that we shouldn't be doing? And so this is, again, tracking both positively, both negatively, every trackable piece that you would want to evaluate your student on, we have the capabilities built within our program. So now that I've said all this um, and kind of get transition, what I'm going to do is move you straight into our player. And here I have set up on the screen, hopefully you all can see now is Eva Smith. And what we are presented with of Eva Smith is an uh, acute right subdural hematoma. Now this type of case that I'm showing you is more of a med surge based case. You would not probably be giving this right away. Uh, but it's, again, I wanted to kind of show you the breadth of what we are, are capable of doing and how these, these play out. I've already set up some configurations, which I'll talk about, but also at the end of the day, just know the instructions. We can customize those for you as faculty to your students to identify this is the key uh, objective I want our students to do. We can have that all written out so the students would know when they sign in and assign time. Eva Smith, 78-year-old woman, writes the thorough hematoma, and what am I supposed to do? They hit the start button, and now we get right into it. Here, we're gonna start evaluating that electronic health record. So if you remember from my screenshots, you can see we have a timeline summary of when our patient came in. Um, here, you can see was admitted today around noon uh, in the neural step down unit. I'm now coming on my shift around 7 p.m. I'm getting my SBAR handoff. And ultimately, what I'm trying to find and discover, I'm gonna start finding my key findings over here. I'm gonna annotate notes. So, as we go through this and look at her orders from her healthcare provider, here it's from Dr. Kate. I'm just gonna kind of show you making some notes here. She's got a right subdural uh, hematoma. Uh, again, we talked about key identifiers, cues that we're trying to find. Right away, I'm gonna see within this record, there's something that sticks out to me. Uh, it's a DNR code status. The fact that she's DNR co status has head trauma, that's going to change my game plan if she crashes. Um, going through here as well, you'll see that since she has been gone through all the emergency rooms, she's now in her room. Um, the basic thing right now is to look at the instructions. She's supposed to have a neuro exam uh, every two hours and have completed four of them. So that's basically the instructions. And also, please hold off on all the medications and sleep sedatives. So that's, that's good to know. As we move forward and look at her admitting notes, you can see what brought her in today. So again, there's a lot of information to go through and I'm not gonna go through all of it today, but I just to show you quickly, again, reading uh, her present illness. It's 78 year old female, brought in the emergency room by her husband, complaining of a headache, 
Basically, she had fallen down four days ago, hit her head on a chest of drawers, refused to discuss the reason why she fell. Um, but she did, her husband did hear a thump, did not lose consciousness, and then brought her in today because her headache is now an eight out of a 10. So when she first came in today, starting headache was an eight out of a 10. And again, I'm documenting these notes that as students go through, they might document more, they might document less. At the end of the day, as I go through and evaluate this particular stage, I'm going to have a multiple choice quiz at the end to kind of make sure I'm grasping what I should be taking away. Um, maybe you're thinking too without seeing any questions coming through, um, but just know timing earlier on as we're learning how to evaluate electronic health record, we're learning to take a history. Pace of play is a little slower for er earlier beginners. As we progress, again, med surge, if I'm doing this in a med surge comp, I could probably go through an electronic health record in like 20, 30 minutes, depending on the complexity of the case. Um, so just know, sake of play and time, what we're looking at, full case play from an experienced person who's been into the iHuman platform, knows, has some you know didactic information, been out the clinical too. These should probably on average take anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. Some may take more, some take less. And that's again without the remediation. So that's just a full on play. As we go through, um, again, trying to find some or complaints or anything that sticks out. Um, you can see that she also not only reports having hit her head, she also has a right knee, um, bruising, et cetera. So again, just making notes going through. Um, I can look through the nurse's note. And again, from a chronological standpoint, I'm going to see you know, her admitting note, came in, 78 years old, blah, blah, blah. She's in room 406. Her pain started to come down after she had some medications. And you could see at 1235, had her first um, uh, neuro check, uh, came back. And then you can see some additional notes that the nurses have taken. She had a second neuro check at 220. Um, you keep advancing, her headache started to come back on around four. And then she had a third neuro check at 425. 515 though, her headache was back down to a two out of a 10. And if you keep looking at her shift, the fourth, neuro is missing. So I just, again, fourth neuro check is missing. And so I just make that note. It stands out. I know that was part of the instructions uh, according to the healthcare provider. You can, along the way, check her MAR. Um, again, if there's any care plan that was created pretending on the patient, uh, it, would, it would all be up there. You can see where the current vitals are, all of her labs that have completed. So you can see her CBC count. What we always provide are the reference ranges. We are never going to provide or have it stick out in bold or highlight anything outside of the range. It's up to the students to identify that um, and to make sure if it's important or not, that is up to them. But we will provide a reference range for them to look at, again, for a learning mode uh, as, as the students progress um, until they know those. You can see even our BMP, if we had some electronic imaging, um, we would provide it, but here we're just going to provide the results and what we interpretation of the ECG, also her brain MRI. You can see there was an eight millimeter subdural report. So I've gone through here again. I blasted through this in about six, seven minutes. Um, and again, a lot of information that I could have gone over that I didn't. But again, for sake of time today, let's walk you through kind of this whole stage so you can see what a whole case looks like. Again, here's here are the key important findings that I should have identified, and that's going to quiz me. Um, yep, I found that her current headache was a 2 out of a 10. I saw that her neuro check was missing. Her admitting headache was an 8 out of a 10. Um, and also that she has a subdural hematoma, DNR code status, bruising right knee. I see a question that may have come in. Um, do students receive feedback during the quiz or after it's completed? Is it possible to turn the rationales off and on as desired? So yes, um, kind of yes to all of that, but ultimately... Uh, they don't get any feedback until I click this blue button where it says compare with the expert. Now it's going to compile my grade on this particular stage, and then they get feedback after I've clicked it, and it will provide that expert feedback. We can turn this off completely, and we play it in a test mode where they get zero feedback. They complete this quiz, move into physical directly. So I'm showing you what the learning mode looks like. Are you sure you're ready to move forward? And now this is the unfolding of having like a preceptor or faculty member along with them as they just look through that electronic health record. This again, can be turned off, played in a test mode, um, but you can see we identify all the key findings that I did make correctly 
Anything that was missed is highlighted. What is key though, is we identify not only what you should have found, where it can be found. You could always close the feedback, go back into the nurse's note, see headache was two out of a 10 at five, et cetera. Go back into the feedback. So this is what we're doing. Not only that level, what do we do with this information? So we're providing a lot of expert information. Again, she's a DNR code. What does it mean to have a DNR code? What's a full code, et cetera. Um, all this again, excellent feedback provided them that they don't have to go and look for it. And they're relying on you to teach them. Well, you can't be there with them when we're doing these. So we are providing that expert feedback for them. As they move forward and progress and ask questions, our patients are alive and well, uh, or maybe not too well, but some of them are. And you can probably not hear her breathing, but I'm going to mute her on my end. But you can see she's blinking. Her chest and shoulders are moving. She's, she's a real person. These are real cases that we've taken and put it into a case player. Again, those modes that ask questions, you can just make a general statement. Hello, I am your new nurse. And you can see the Google search starts to come back. The more specific I am, the less specific I am, the more responses start to come back. Um, hello, I'm your new nurse. And again, she's going to respond with, well, that's so nice. Uh, when do I get to go home? You know, just typical, well, hold on, what, you know, what's your name? Do you know who you are? Um, you know, even asking you the basic question, how can I help you today? And she said, well, that's a weird question. Did you look at my chart? So she's very feisty, 78 years old. She's feeling good right now. Her headache's two out of a 10, et cetera. So if we don't know kind of where the mode or ask questions, we can provide a full taxonomy uh, for the students to learn. Statements, client rounding, again, open questions, what we can go through as well. Um, you can do this, you know, do you know what your name was? Do you know when your birthday? These are all standard questions that we are asking. You know, let me wash my hands before I get started. This sounds great. Um, you could have said, I'm here to perform. Oh, great, you're all concerned about me. Well, yes, we are. Um, go through here again, uh, identifying all the complaints she was talking about. Um, I know she had falls. So we can also do a voice to text. Can you describe how you fell? Not feel, fell. And so we asked the question and she wouldn't share with our other colleague, but she's gonna, you know, lo and behold, we find that she has a clue here. And ultimately at the end of the day, you would keep going down this and she's urinary incontinent. Um, again, I don't know that by just asking one question. I know this by knowing the case. So we also have embedded exercises in here. We knew with what I missed that she needed a fall risk assessment performed. So here's a, here's a Morse fall scale. Again, asking questions, we get full evaluation right now and immediately. Uh, and also going through here, you'll see the pain assessment tool so we can share that information. So we have embedded exercises, they're quizzes, sometimes they're information to share to a patient, sometimes there's information to have on the back burner for your students to learn from. But again, embedded exercises within the program as they are learning unfolding. Once we go through here, again, same thing. What did I find out? She is high fall risk. Um, I should have also found out the urinary incontinence, but I, I missed a couple. But I will show you a couple pieces too that if I do miss it, what's that look like? And again, there's an X. You only get credit if you've selected it and you also what you're against. You never get discounted for something you selected. You only get discounted if you missed the certain clues. So again, we provide all the information to the data. Hey, I asked six really good questions. Only one was out in left field. Um, but here's all the more questions I should have provided. And we're also tracking the order that I've asked them. So as we move through here, what do we do with the findings of information, et cetera? Moving into physical assessments, same thing. Full head to toe, we can provide, um, again, for those early learners, we can turn on hotspots so they can listen to pulse. You probably can't hear that. Um, but ultimately, in the day, you will document um, her pulse. This is all going to be recorded. Moving forward, maybe it's normal, et cetera. So, we are gonna do a full scale head to toe, what needs to be done, respiration. Again, I could have turned on and breathe. So I'm just gonna make up a number for right now. Um, taking blood pressure. 
I'm going to take a blood pressure, how I do it, how it's performed, um, et cetera. Everything's being tracked. So just like a normal, you document, et cetera. For the sake of time, I'm going to let it go too soon, see what it tells me at the end. Um, but I'm just going to hypothetically make up something there. We can do again, uh, do want to do perform an ocular motor test here. I'll blow up my screen a little bit more for everybody to see, but you can see she's following my fingers. Am I doing the test correctly? Am I going too fast, et cetera? And if I want to examine her pupils, we can look for reactivity. So we click on our flashlight here. We're checking for reactivity. Everything looks good there for normal, et cetera. Um, we want to inspect her skin. Maybe it's her IV site. Um, if you look here, it looks infiltrated, but let's check it out. I assess IV site. And again, here, medical media, this is what we see. And you can see it as clear as day. So a lot to do, a lot to perform. There's a full head to toe. Again, the biggest other thing we would talk about is how we auscultate and maybe want to auscultate her heart. We use real sounds. So they're not synthetic, synthesized uh, through the computer. They are recording. We use Proctor Harvey heart sounds. So they are real heart sounds. If we're doing auscultating her lungs, the same thing. Um, we can auscultate and we can also flip her over to listen to all the areas correctly and it tracks everything that I do. Um, make a note of it, et cetera, flip her over. So again, sake of time, I've now gone into the final stage of assessment. Um, have to have one findings. I'm just gonna gibberish put this in here, to show you what students can still do and get my findings going through. Fourth neural check should have been completed. I can see she's wearing glasses. Maybe I thought it was infiltrated etc. Compare with the expert and come back. So you see pulse was all good, correct. Um, here are the 10 key exams that I performed that were correct. Here are the 16 exams I should have performed that I missed. What do I should what I do with that information? And then it assessed me, like taking that human factor out of it. Did I I took her pulse, I got it right. But man, I was a heck of a guess because look, I didn't count for the minimum of the 15 seconds. I didn't auscultate either the posterior in the correct order. So all of this, I didn't perform a complete H test. All of that is now making it black and white, take a human factor away from you. So you can truly assess bad habits or no. Is this an individual issue? Is it an aggregate issue? All of this is tracked. And then what do we do with the findings, et cetera? As we move forward, now we're getting into the critical thinking development. What do I have taken all my cues? So you think of step one and step two, these are analyzing and, and recognizing all the cues. As I go into now prioritization and hypothesizing, what's, what's, what do I need to know? What's acute? Um, and I'm gonna, again, just kind of zoom through this a little bit, um, but we're going through patient wears glasses. Uh, maybe that's actually uh, a no change. Um, bruising on the forehead was acute. Admitting headache, you know, that was that was cute. Uh, occasional incontinence, not sure. Maybe it's worsening. I don't know. High fall risk, resolving, no change, et cetera. So you fill out all of this information and you complete each step and get feedback. I see a question may have come in. Uh, seems like the product can be leveled for the students in a med search focus. Do you have a way for the product to be used in a management course where the topics are less disease process? Uh, focused and more safety, quality, legal, ethical, uh, et cetera, focused as well as managing multiple patients. So yes, uh, we will be getting into that more of a staging. Right now, the way our program is, we've set up and we focused on med surge, we focused on uh, well visits kind of for learning in the um, early stages as you're going through fundamentals. We have some rehab, there's OB, uh, some peds and mental health psych. Those are the main focuses that we have today, but yes, we can and we will be moving forward as we continue to develop. Uh, today we have 22 cases. By the end of the year, we should have 35 and we're hoping to almost double that into next year uh, around the same time. So more developing. We've been around for seven years in the graduate world. So helping nurse practitioners, physician assistants, MDDOs, what we have now rolled this into is the undergraduate. And, and really, while we classify as undergraduate, they're just pre-diagnosed cases or post-diagnosed cases. Everything in the undergraduate is post-diagnosis. 
what do we do with that information? Um, so good question and more to come as we develop that. But yeah, this is, I'm sh showing you specifically a med surge based case. So that's why this is more heavy on the med surge. Um, again, what do we do with information? Look for DNR code status. How do we identify that? Well, we know that's to, with CNA, I'm sorry, with advocacy. Whoops, let me work, work that back. Advocacy. Subdural hematoma is CNS. Constipation, we know that's related to GI. Uh, neuro missing, that was back in the CS again. Fall risk, oh, now we know safety's involved. Uh, where's glasses? Maybe it's safety. Bruising, now we got tissue integrity. So there's a lot of what we're trying to find. What is our client problem? Are we identifying all of them correctly? Um, emitting the headache, et cetera. So I'm just gonna, again, go through a few of these, just fast play for the sake of time. So we have plenty of time at the end to go through questions um, and get feedback. So you can see before I started goofing around, I was on a pretty good solid track. But again, here are the six main categories that we have to figure out and prioritize their problems. Being nurses, I know the number one out there for all of you is safety. Um, knowing that she has a subdural hematoma, CNS is gonna come into play. And it's really hard for you to pick the third one at this particular time because I didn't give you enough of the history, uh, but it's probably gonna be either her uh, urinary incontinence or what I hadn't even talked about, her zirconia constipation. A lot of people pick your urinary incontinence because that's the reason why she fell. And lo and behold, an expert has identified that the GI is more at play because of the straining to go to the bathroom can cause more hemorrhaging, bleeding, leading to some major complications, if not death. Um, so even though I selected them in different orders, we are all tracking them. Those are the top three priorities. Now taking my action plans. What do I do with it? Again, keep finding information. How do I keep channeling down that tunnel to get to my pure, pure uh, action? What am I going to do on my ship, et cetera? Now you see not everything in here needs to be completed. Uh, we, we had the fourth neuro was missing, but guess what? I, I should have completed that along the way. It has been resolved. So under CNS, maybe I just need to strictly adhere to what the HCP uh, provider orders state. So I'm just going to make that as my note. Again, high fall risk. I know it's under safety, so I need to probably mark a room as a high fall risk. Uh, probably maintain her bed in a low position because I know she has low muscle tone, and I want to make sure she doesn't fall out of her bed, placing also any arm pad alarms, et cetera. So you can go through all of these, take actions where needed. And again, for the sake of time, just kind of speeding along. Oh, okay, so question is, is this for practical nursing programs too? Can it be run on Chromebooks? Uh, so let me start with that one first. Uh, the practical nursing, yes. What we have designed this to be, this is one of the first out there, but we would basically, the LPN is the assessment piece. The critical thinking of where I'm in the staging of now, that's more RN scope of practice, where the LPN, yeah, we can give you these patients. In fact, we have current partners that are LPN partners that are using this truly for the assessment piece. Critical thinking still involved, but not to the level of what an RN is, is doing. So good question. And can it be used on Chromebooks? Yes, as long as they have internet access and some type of screen, hopefully bigger than what you see on this, um, they can access our program. It's, it is a cloud-based system. It is designed for 24-7 access, uh, even providing 24-7 support during the main part of the week, um, which is unusual as well. But anyways, going through here, uh, great question. Um, keep them coming as we're talking because I'm happy to take on as many as we need. And then we're comparing with the expert identifying, you can see I didn't complete a lot of these tasks, but these are the three that I'm focusing on. What is it that I should be doing and how do I prioritize these actions? Well, we also know our students, we've seen too many movies or shows, everything's stat. We got to do it. It's stat. Um, on this particular patient, not anything is going to be stat. A lot of this is going to be probably routine or urgent, and we're going to compare with the expert. And lo and behold, we're going to give you the definition of what do you need to know within the first 15 minutes that I need to take an action on. That's what stat means. Um, doing an urgent, like what do I need to do in the first couple hours on my shift? And then routine is what I'm doing for my completed on my shift or what I can maybe hand off uh, down the road. So again, encouraging all of this for students to learn from, to actually pay attention to that expert feedback. And then we open up to a nurse's note. Again, this can be provided. It could be an S-bar. It could be 
um, a shift assessment, whatever you want it to be. We give uh, a benchmark on a shift assessment based on this, but if you as faculty see this product as something that, wow, I could really use this, I would love to put in an SBAR. We can help customize one for you to use as a benchmark for them to utilize and learn from. So just know that there's a lot of flexibility within our program, um, this being one of them, but I just want to kind of show you what happens here towards the end. Once I've submitted, we then provide a full uh, case summary for each student. So they've gone through it, they've now understand it, they get the patient disposition, what were the key learning objectives, all the nursing pearls that are included, and then even the pharmacology. Not only are we providing um, Farm, but what, what is the generic name, even to some cases, what is the, the, the name brand, the classification of the drug, what's the time to peak, et cetera. So just more learning aspects of what's all involved in this type of case, so they know what to do moving forward. Once they are done, they can actually get their own evaluation, or again, I will move here uh, very frequently into what the, what the faculty can see, because we can actually set these up into a scoring rubric for you tracking your mastery level bar that you set in addition to creating a grade in a grade book. Um, but you can see here, everything was time stamped. So I was in the full case here with you guys for 22 minutes, 41 seconds. And each individual piece that I went through, so taking history, I only did it for two minutes and 32 seconds. You can see my questions that I asked, what I didn't ask. And you can now only, you can see the old parts of what was the question, what was the patient response, and then what I should have been also asking what was missed. So they can always take this information and learn from it. Um, again, this information is provided to you. We can break that down when I described into that scoring rubric. We are tracking when they started it, when it was submitted, total time in there. You know, efficiency rates. Here you can see, asked so many questions, what was their efficiency rate? We can put, again, a mastery level. Maybe it's 50% early on. Maybe it's 70%. They needed to find 70% of all the right questions to ask or 70% of all the physical exams to do to, to feel what I feel our students have mastered that skill. Um, so that's what the green and red focuses on. And then we can put a weight factor, again, at the end of the day, providing a full total score. To see this also from an electronic standpoint, you can now look at a plot diagram of my cohort. And you can see like our goal here is to be accurate and efficient. We're increasing their skills at taking history, doing assessment, but also that critical thinking. We're tracking everything on here. And this gives you a quick snapshot of, hey, I have a couple outliers. This one seems to be nailing it. Um, I only asked 36 questions, 32 were on the money. Very efficient, very good history taker. Out here, we have someone who's asked 145 questions. If we've been that long with a patient, we know that they're not gonna be happy with us and or we've maybe killed our patient asking them too many questions that they haven't killed us already. Same with physical exams. Are we doing too many extraneous? Our goal and you as faculty is to bring them down to the lower right quadrant, the green. How are we making them more efficient at their time, doing better assessment? Because at the end of the day, that's gonna progress them into making better decisions on how to care for their, their patient. Um, so a lot of information to go through here. We're checking even frequently missed. Um, so if we go through, you can see it's tracking my whole court, forgot to ask these questions. We didn't do these tasks. The example I'm showing you now on the screen is a post-op five-day hip replacement. And again, 63% didn't auscultate his abdomen. 50% forgot to even just examine his pupils or auscultate his heart. That's an issue as a group. If 50% of my students are doing that, that's an issue we need to address as a whole. So again, a lot of information, even the distractors, and we know it comes down to end clicks. You know, what's the most right answer uh, there's a lot of distractors, and that's where the uh, the extraneous tasks are falling down towards. We Why are we asking these questions? Why are we doing these physical exams when we know the focus should be X, Y, or Z? So a lot of information I know I'm sharing with you, and I'm just kind of running through a lot. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys could see this uh, in full scale. And I'm going to go switch back here to my PowerPoint as, as we start to wrap up and finish here. But again, just going to circle back to talk about virtual simulation and the four C's that we're focusing on for the students and the four R's. Again, we know safe and effective clinical judgment. That's what uh, National Council is, is striving for. And ultimately, the clinical experience that they are going to get 
it's, it's hard when you, for you to evaluate when multiple clinical sites, multiple different days. So you have a student that saw an apple, you have one that saw an orange, you have another one that saw a banana. How do you know if no one saw the same thing, what the misses are here is everybody gets to evaluate the apple on their pace, your pace, whatever you've set it on. But at the end of the day, everybody gets the exact same pace and understanding of what they need, building their competency um, from a cognitive learning aspect and also their competence to go out. We know that first time they get in front of that patient, you almost have to shove them through the door to get them to talk to someone. This is going to get them more familiar with asking questions because they'll know what questions to ask when it comes to a certain patient. Back to the R's for the remediation uh, time. I mean, there's so much information that you would love to teach them, but you can't. Um, there's a question that just came in. Is this program part of the capital program or part of a purchase program? And the answer is, it is, yes, it is a Kaplan program. However, it is an addition to the testing or remediation for NQUARTS prep that we currently have. So it is, uh, we do have partnership pricing that we can share with you. If you want to meet with us one-on-one, -on -one, which I'll share at the end of this, of this program, but yes, we can do that. Um, and have any pediatric cases been developed yet? Yes, we currently have four uh, in the peds area specifically. Um, and again, we can share more with that uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And where can I find this list of cases? Ultimately, reach out. I'll show you uh, how to get kind of contact with us. You can set up, set up a demo. We'll walk you through a full case. We'll provide you with a listing of our cases that we have currently and share a deeper dive into there with you. So back to the R's for reporting. I just you know, concluded that. And then the range of cases, you, as I said, PEDS, OB, med surge, mental health psych, wellness visits for kind of fundamentals and also rehab. So that's kind of where our early focus has been uh, as the highest need. We are continuing to develop ongoing more and more and more, especially in the OB and PEDS area, because we know in clinical rotations, they just don't see enough. So we're developing them as we speak and unfolding. So again, getting that time back um, from you as faculty and also the students uh, to get the extra practice that they need for clinical. Um, again, it's supported by a Kaplan nursing team. So your team, we have a curriculum integration team. Um, Dr. David Schultz is a head of our executive director for our undergraduate nursing group, but we work together. So if you are, that question came back, if you are a current partner of Kaplan, um, we work all together with the faculty, nurse consultants, and we get all the training together. We have a specific team for iHuman, uh, but we all talk together and work together. And again, there's student training and support uh, at the beginning of the implementation is a, is a full process that we have down. There's a lot of handholding early on. And for the students, these are assigned and pay. It's, it's more of a subscription. It's per student, per use, per semester type of thing. You get unlimited on the cases. You don't have to pick how many cases. It's all of our cases are in play. It's just uh, ultimately, how do you want to use them? Where do you want to use them? Um, and again, don't just take our word for it. Um, you know, improving clinical judgment with virtual simulation. Again, you can see some of the quotes here, student development, clinical reasoning skills, and clinical data gathering, which is the clinical judgment uh, with utilization of so that's, you know, um, you can see this is all a part of where everything is moving towards. And for virtual simulation and how immersive and problems-based uh, learning, uh, decision-making and, and applying the evidence, you know, that's again, application analysis. That's what are the passing levels to nursing. But beyond that, Kaplan, Kaplan thinks beyond just the NCLEX. We are trying to prepare, again, not the minimum competency, the maximum competent nurses, making them best prepared so they can take these skills and expand on them beyond the NCLEX into their practice. So that's ultimately, at the end of the day, our goal is to help them with that. Um, and again, talking about scheduling, setting up a time to meet with us, uh, the seed of full actions in play, we would do a, a, another demo one-on-one -on -one with me or a couple other people, or you and your colleagues, happy to do it. Uh, and ultimately, if you reach out to www.i-human.com, make sure that dash is in there. Uh, that's where there's going to be a form in there. You can say, we'd like to set up a demo. Uh, reach out will be set out to one of us uh, to help set that, correlate that up within your team. Um, typically, those are coordinated within, I would say, a week or two from your request, uh, depending on our schedule. Uh, but to learn more about the curriculum integration, like that's we can take a deeper dive how that looks and provide that. Um, next question. 
can you share the cost per student? So generically right now, yes, I can sell you the full product uh, all in uh, is $500 for undergraduate nursing. If you're a partner school, you actually get a 10% discount on that, meaning a partner school if you're using some other Kaplan product within their program. And then if you really wanted to take advantage, we have a, um, a promotional pricing going on right now where it's $75 per student per term, and it's not necessarily required to use it for every class of every term. So that's the, the new current pricing. And also, uh, do state boards of nursing count time on iHuman as simulation clinical time? So specifically, I can't identify if it's per state. If they identify simulation, if virtual simulations included that, yes, we would qualify as simulation time, but it's all based on your state and rules. But yes, we are qualifying into, uh, into that, that timing of, of why it can be a clinical makeup. For certain states, that's exactly what they're going to do is fill in some of our cases uh, for that. Um, so kind of moving forward here, I guess we can open it up to some questions. Um, so feel free to keep having them coming in. We have about oh, 15, 10, 15 more minutes uh, available. So good question so far. And happy to continue to stay here as, as long as you need. Um, to answer questions. So please have, have a way. If you don't have questions, um, one of the pieces that maybe come up, if you're familiar with some of our other competitors out there is do your avatars talk? And uh, currently pedagogically, we have chosen the answer to be no. And the, the two main reasons, one from a time of play. So think about like, again, we're trying to manage, you have students that are trying to manage school. Some are trying to also manage work. Some have family life. There's a lot of factors going on. So time is of the essence. We keep talking about time. You as faculty have a ton of stuff too that you're juggling. So to speed up the case of play, we've done the research. We know that you can actually learn uh, five times faster by reading and comprehending than you can by listening. Also, if you can go back to how we present the answer is in a read text, it's on the screen. If you didn't hear the patient exactly what you thought, and also uh, we found it's uh, for additional language uh, learners, to keep the answer on the screen, it's more speedy because if they have to hit play and they have to wait till the patient answers, again, also from a technology standpoint, our engineers currently just don't feel that the technology can capture empathy and pain to the degree that you would hear in, uh, in, in real life. So it doesn't, it doesn't replace it, um, but we are trying to, again, help with the cognitive development of the learning aspect of what you do with the information, taking the information, and for the speed of play, we, we decided to keep it as a read only. So that was my own question that most people usually ask uh, that I hear a lot of during presentations. Anything else out there uh, for the group that I'm missing or would like to, you guys would like to see more of or hear of? Again, we're developing these. We've been around for a while, so we know how this is all correlating into the development uh, of students being in the graduate nursing world for a while now. Um, next question. Uh, let's see, Steve, where's kind of time? If students start a case and then needs to break out, is their information saved? Absolutely. So I believe it's every half a second uh, in the system when you're in there, it's saving every click that you've just in or typed word. So glitch that there's a lightning strike and all of a sudden your computer just blops out and kicks you off the internet anything like that anytime they want to do it yes it stops and saves and it will resume back once they log back into where they left off so it is safe to say that once they get in there they it will track them and they can stop and play they are not designed or meant that you have to sit down all at one time and play it through that is uh, the nice piece about our, our, our program and how students basically have time, just like doing questions. They don't have hours upon hours to just take questions and remediate. They only have certain blocks. So that's the same type of thing. Typically, these are assignments. You usually give your students a week, two, maybe three weeks to complete them. Um, and then you can see how they're moving along that stage of who's been completed, who's not, what stage are they in, et cetera, um, to kind of encourage them. So you as faculty can even track the activity that's going on live within your students. Um, so if the avatar doesn't talk, it seemed that the student can speak the question and then find it on the list to ask an avatar. Is that correct? So correct. So that going back to the three modes of what we 
described, and I'll show you here since I have this, the PowerPoint up. When we're talking about questions, there's three types of, of ways to ask questions. One was just to type it freehand if you know what kind of question you want to ask. The second, I showed you using the taxonomy that we can provide all the statements and questions. The other was using that microphone to speed up typing so I can do a voice to text. So it's the same type of thing as typing it in, but it's more voice command and it does then pull up you know, the listing of, of questions that I might want to ask and I select the one that comes up the closest way that I want to ask it uh, according to the old cards theory of, of asking our patient questions. Another good question. Anything else that's out there that's pending that you guys have thought of that we can't answer, that I can potentially answer today um, and set up another time for us to connect maybe one-on-one -on -one more specifically? Anything, I can't think of anything that I haven't shared other than, um, again, from, from a support standpoint, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of hand-holding along the way. So think of implementation. That's the, the scariest part, right? It's sometimes that, that, that word change is, is the scariest thing. And, and, and I always look at, instead of it being changing, you're refining some of your processes. As we refine and we get better at what we do, you start to add in pieces that you've been missing. So that's the, the, the think of how we are staging implementation. There's a lot of handholding along the way. Um, question comes through, if the nurse program does not adopt this program, but some students would like to purchase it on their own, is available to them. Currently, we are not offering this as a retail uh, purchased product. It is an institutional based only, um, which maintains, again, the integrity and kind of the, the not benchmarking, but the, the data out there, uh, we don't have it designed currently right now for retail individual student purchase. Uh, can you put a time limit on it? Yes, you actually can put time limits on there. All in the customization of what we can put into our system. We can limit the responses. We can, again, change um, a lot of information on there and, and just doing a, a uh, configuration. So yeah, there's a lot of flexibility within our cases uh, to utilize. Anything else? I'll just scroll here to the beginning. Um, if you guys need anything else, like I said, i-human.com, I um, we can set up some times. There's, you know, walk through, there's a little bit of tutorial on there as well, talking about a human. Um, but by all means, happy. I'm still got a couple more minutes here. If you got a couple more questions, okay. How long does the student have access after the date of purchase, either by term or by full time of program? So ultimately, it's it's designed. If we scaffold this throughout your full curriculum, you assign cases per semester. So how these are accessible is based on how you assign them. Uh, again, our expert. Uh, Dr. David Schultz would walk you through that with your curriculum, kind of mapping them out and suggesting like, oh, this is a good case that I would throw in if you're using it for PEDS or OB or, or med surge, et cetera. Uh, which ones to use? They can be turned on. They can be turned on as the whole semester. So you can leave one or two maybe as a backup if you do need a clinical makeup or you want it for just eight students to clinical makeup. Or you can make this a true homework assignment that all 30, 60, 100 of your students need to complete Eva Smith. Um, and you give a window. So you can say, we only want it from weeks three to week five for them to do it. It's a homework grade, et cetera. Or you can turn it on for the full semester. Ultimately though, at the end of the day, it's semester to semester, they get assigned new cases uh, according kind of staggering through their curriculum. Um, so hopefully that answered uh, your question because it says, how long does the student have access? And, it, um, and it's basically from when you tell us to start their access to when you tell us to stop their access. So that's the easiest way to answer that. Any other final statements, thoughts, questions? And if not, I will just sign off and say I really do appreciate everybody coming today. It's been a pleasure. Um, at, by all means, ask questions. Think of more. Send it to us, ie-human.com. Um, if you're a current partner, reach out to your nurse consultant or account manager. Uh, they're happy to help. And, facilitate this information as well and get something coordinated with one of us. Um, but again, thank you so much. We're excited about where our future is heading with, with virtual simulation and within Kaplan. And uh, we, we do appreciate your time and uh, look forward to seeing you again in the future. So thank you.